Hi everyone, welcome to uh, at the, my studio today. Um, I'm really happy to be painting this. Uh, just really fun and kind of silly, and but at the same time, really beautiful. I've been spending quite a bit of time playing around with uh, drawing and painting these chickens and roosters and such. Uh, so uh, I thought I would go ahead and paint one for you today. Um, I don't have a whole lot else going on in the studio. I've been doing a lot of painting. We are working on a new workshop and not that it's like a secret, but it's not kind of together yet. So um, uh, not much to say about it. And um, what else is going on? Oh, I'm, I'm just, the weather's starting to get a little bit nice. Okay, okay. Thanks for hanging in there with us. Um, just want to make sure all the all systems are going. You can hear and see us really well. Yeah, so I've been getting kind of pre prepped for plain air season a little bit, and I came across this little goodie on um, Amazon, and I think it's kind of cool. I I'm kind of one for making our own grayscales, making our own viewfinders. I I really think that that's important but I do like this because it's got all the tools together it's kind of nerdy <laughs> which I also like it's got this this so if you're out playing air painting and this has got a, a a ruler on it so that's kind of cool measuring tape so um, so you could look really official when you're out there painting with this on so I thought that, that was kind of a, a clever little thing so pick that up and just Anything that's like small like this and lightweight that can go in your backpack, I think it's really a good deal for plain air. Okay, so let's get into our our chicken today. Now, the one thing I think about chickens that's so um, cool, we'll go right to, to this right now, straight ahead today. Um, what, what I think is so cool about um, chickens <laughs> Yes, they're, they're funny, funny little shapes. I'm gonna get my get my earring to hang. There we go. So, <laughs> what's what to me is so funny about them? The the this this these shapes. So to me, this guy is just this little uh uh the rectangle like so. Kind of like that with a cone on it. Like so, and then another cone on it, like so. <laughs> That's all it is, and then it's that, and then it's got the little tail feathers. It's so cute. I think that's just so adorable, and that's all they are. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so it's kind of a, a fun thing to think about when when you're painting. Uh, just I'm always breaking anything that I'm painting down in the simplest possible thing for me. And um, I just think that the chickens and roosters are really amusing. Yeah, oh, let me show you a couple of drawings that I did. Just This is just um, um, pencil and ink and a little bit of, um, I think I used gouache for the red. But super fun, and their, their shapes are just so strong and graphic. I think they're really, really beautiful, really fun to draw and paint. I might have shown these before, and then I did this guy. This is, um, this is, I think I used Sharpie and some ink, and this is acrylic paint, a little bit of charcoal. I'm just playing around. This is just regular bond paper. I like working on that kind of thing and then this guy and kind of a, almost like a caricature 
but um, it just, again, just really graphic and fun to draw. I found on Pinterest some absolutely beautiful watercolor sketches, kind of Japanese-style watercolor um, sketches of roosters. They're so beautiful, so you can look for that kind of thing, too. Okay, so let's just get right into this guy. Oh, and I have this this guy that, um, this is a project that I did for the monthly lessons uh, for next year. Um, so a little sneak peek into one of the one of the lessons. And I really like how it turned out. It was um, kind of nice. So I'll put this where I can see it, because that'll kind of guide me, kind of figure out a few things. Um, so that'll get me started. Today, I think I'm going to start with a little sketch and an alcohol wash. So I'll do the, the sketch and the wash, and then we'll, um, I'll let Kevin take it inside and dry it. Um, we don't do that out here while we're streaming because um, we don't want the breaker to um, <laughs> go off. That's kind of why we, we bring it inside. Okay, so I've, I'm, I want to do a square, but one thing I do want is I, I want, um, I, I, I don't want to cross, I want a little space in front of him, so I, I want to make sure I, I give myself a little bit of space here, and I want to make sure I get his whole, whole thing in here, so if I, if I come start with that, just kind of a baseline that I think will help me. And again, here's his little shape. He's just this, this little rectangle here with this on it. And then his little tail feathers and another one of, one of these for his, and Yep, so I see I, I knew I would do that. I'd get him too far forward. And I just think that it's so so interesting. Little. But there's not much else to him. Yep. And then the gesture of his other foot here, it's pretty fun. And this comes down a little bit more. And then it's back feathers. I think that's pretty good. Maybe this is a little bit bigger, but we'll see. Okay, so I think that's pretty good. Now I have to decide on what I want to do background-wise. If I look at the photo, there's this angle down uh, uh, here. He's on some kind of slope, but I don't want that. I'm, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to keep it more like this. I do want some of this stuff in the background, this green. I do want this kind of little bit of value in the background. And, and the one thing that occurs to me that I want before I do the alcohol wash, I'm going to get some of my Terry Ludwig. I really see these feathers as sort of purple. So I'm just going to go ahead and get something in for that. These are so beautiful. Those colors are amazing. I found uh, um, having, um, you can have chickens in your yard here in Portland, and I found several local people that have them, and, and I go around and I, crazily take pictures of them but there's so um, there's so many v varieties and they're so diverse it's really pretty pretty neat does he come up a little higher maybe I don't know 
I'm going to leave it at that for now. Okay, and let's see, maybe I want a little bit more stuff in the background. Oh, I've got a little scoring in my paper. That's okay. And maybe I want some brown back there. Just something to kind of play with a little bit. All right, that's that'll get me started. Now I've got my um, isopropyl alcohol. It's seventy percent and a bristle brush. I'll come along and give it this number in the background. I love this drips and just letting it be playful and loose. And there's this guy. Oh, it's so fun. A little bit of that action. It's pretty dark. That's okay. And uh, Marla, can you clarify if that's UART paper? This is um, not. UART. This is pastel matte. It looks like UART because of the color, but it's not. It's sand pastel matte. I just want this kind of abstract. This is kind of juicy. Kind of slimy almost. It's kind of fun. Now, I've kind of really obscured the drawing, right? But that's okay. I did it. I drew, the, I drew it. So I already have sort of a motor memory. I, I've already thought about those shapes and how it gets put together. So I don't worry about losing my drawing. It's there. I did it. I can feel it. So that's nice. Okay, so I'm going to let Kevin take this in, give it a shot with the hair dryer, and we can chat for a minute before we get started again. What's up, guys? I hope you have a nice weekend planned of creativity and doing some fun stuff. I hope the weather is getting nicer where you are. I know some parts of the country is still kind of nutso, but... Um, yeah, here we're finally getting some nice weather. At least when the sun's out, it feels warm. It's good. And the, the crocus are starting to pop up. My, my tulips out front are starting to, to pop up. So that's really it's a good, good sign, good sign. So, yeah. I don't know. I don't know what else to say. <laughs> I have... Um, a whole bunch of stuff going in my in my new studio. I'm loving it. The light in there is amazing. Um, I'm really enjoying it. And uh, this weekend I have some big stuff that I'm working on and some small stuff I'm working on. I'm also, you monthly people, I'm working on the trainings for you. And I should have um, those completed for you um, next week. So, um, so I'll get caught up there on the trainings. Uh, keep you busy. I know. I know you need that. <laughs> and we have a question no, about yeah. what the alcohol wash is supposed to do. So the alcohol wash is basically just giving me kind of a foundation. Um, some it, it's kind of like a, a a pastel underpainting a little bit, and then that that just gives me something to play off of. Gives me a little value. In the background, put set some color down, and you know the thing that I like the most about doing something like that is it it gives it um, the piece a um, a sense of spontaneity and kind of kismet that you might not get if you just um, went for straight pastel. Great, there it is. Ah. And there are lots of different ways of approaching an underpainting. And 
um, you know, I'll, I'll do that. I'll um, approach it differently depending on, on um, how I feel and, and what the subject is and so on. All right, let's get this guy going. I'm going to start with the, I love this kind of rich color on the, on the top of him. Um, so I'm going to pick out a couple things that, that I feel like are going to give me that. Oh, that's nice. And um, so I'll just start in. Not, I'm not really sure about how this is going to come together. I don't really have a big plan for him. <laughs> All right, so now I'm going to get that underside of him's belly. Let's see, so maybe, maybe this, yeah. So I'm just kind of getting his initial shape established. And then the, the design on his feathers, I'll, um, I'll start to get that as I'm putting in the marks. I can already start to kind of shape the marks to, suggest what's there in terms of the feathers and the, the texture, all that good stuff. And they're just kind of overlapping the l layers of feathers are overlapping and Couple comments here. Um, <laughs> um, Mary says that she did my first alcohol wash two weeks ago. She really loved it and really helped her painting. Yeah, I think that it's um, it's there's something about it that um, it also kind of unifies everything. Um, so. All right, that's already kind of looking kind of neat. All right, so I want to get the red in. I'm going to just go for it. I'm just going to go for it. And Paul has a comment slash question. Um, yeah. <laughs> I noticed your easel is angled backwards. Would it be better to have almost vertical so the residue doesn't fall on the work below the application of pastel? Um. I usually, do, it, it might have gotten, um, usually, it probably is, it's not angled too much, it's pretty straight, um, but it might be, um, it, it, it usually, we usually do try to keep it um, angled pretty straight up and down. Yep, just getting, so I'm just, <laughs> it's pretty fun. All right. And then I'll just get his legs in here, his feet. This is the tricky part here. Okay. 
All right, that's, that's kind of fun. Okay, so now, what do I want in that foreground, in the background? Kind of, hmm, I'm thinking I want, I want some green. And I think I'll, I think I'll take a cue from the photo in a sense that this this down here is kind of grayed and and this will give me an opportunity here to. I love this silhouette of of the the shape back here. <laughs> it's it's fun. It's a little butt and this feathers coming up. As you work, how do you clean your hands? Oh, that's a good question. I usually have a damp rag in here that I wipe my hands off with. Um, and you could use baby wipes or whatever, but I, I, I like to have I like to use the damp rag because it's a little more environmentally. <laughs> I don't know, I I know that's just that's all it's hardly anything because uh, I think it's difficult as an artist to be environmentally friendly in the studio to, I mean, it's not impossible, but um, it's a challenge. Ooh, I like the background. And see, I'm letting that background like come into the bird. So it's unified. Just a suggestion here of a little cast shadow, right? Just a little. And you, um, really quick, Marla, do you remember what size uh, your piece is here? What what size the painting is? Um, no? yeah, it's eleven by eleven. Eleven by eleven, great. I know that, and you know why I know that? Because I measured it so that I could fit it in that box. Um, all right, I want to get the eye going here. So I'm going to lean in to get it. Also, can you do an alcohol wash on toned paper? Yeah, yeah, you can. It's just not as, you know, um, this paper has got a little tone to it, so it's fine, but it's on the light side, right? So, you know, when you do it on a darker toned paper, it just doesn't have, it just doesn't have the impact. That's all.
So now I'm just kind of doing a little bit of detail work on him. Um, but I, I, I'm trying to uh, say the most with the least here. I'm trying to get it in without um, necessarily rendering. Now, maybe some of his uh, feathers, the direction of them. So I'm just kind of figuring out what kind of strokes can I use to, to do this. I'm kind of doing the kind of stamping thing that I like to do comes in handy for a lot of things. Some dots. It's definitely got little dots on him. It's kind of If something makes you smile when you're painting it, that's a good thing. I was working on something else this week that the whole time I'm working on it it's just, just made me smile. Here's a question. Uh huh. Uh, do you cover your pastels when not in use? No. And this person is wondering if pastels dry up over time. No, they don't dry up. They're really archival. They last forever, really. And the good ones will last forever. They're just pure pigment in a stick. There's nothing in them to to degrade or to go bad. Um, that's they're amazing. Um, I don't cover mine. I don't um, mine out here. They're, they're by themselves at night. They don't have a kitty cat um, joining in the fun or anything like that. So they're really um, safe out here. Oh, except for the spiders. <laughs> yeah. Um, here's another question from huh? Mary. Uh, she says, huh? is Marla rotating the pastel stick in her hand as she's working? If so, why? Yeah, because I'm doing that to find the spot that's going to do the thing that I want it to do. So the, they're shaped, they're irregular in shape. So I'm turning it till it does the thing that I'm looking for it to do. Okay, I got a little carried away up there with the that shape. Oh, and I want to come in here. Like that. Now, um, oh yeah, it's looking fun. I think it's just like this. I'm pushing this. I'm checking this. I'm checking the color. 
I'm also checking right now, like what kind of mark will this stick make for me that I want? Um, so I'm always doing that. That's, you know, the great thing about having a little practice spot. If you don't have that, you're, to me, you're putting yourself at a disadvantage. Are you using a black uh, pastel in there, or is that blue no? Squares? It's it's um I haven't used a black. I I do intend to use some black. Um, it's a, a Terry Ludwig. Oh. And when uh, after the stream, this will be available to watch on YouTube. Correct? Yes. Yeah, you can watch this as many times as you want. little bit of quality of light. It's kind of a soft, soft light, but it, it's still, there's still some stuff going on there, light-wise. I want to switch to a kind of a grayer, something like this. Let's see, would that work? Eh, not, not quite, maybe more like that. Here's a good question from Susan. What's the hardest subject Marla remembers ever tackling? Uh, Maybe the barn? <laughs> remember that? We did some barn painting. We did some barns, and we, and we thought they were just going to be so easy and slam dunky and no problem. And oh my god, I just was had just like weird, couldn't paint those barns, man. That was weird. Cause there's no, there's no good reason for that. At all. All right, so now I'm gonna go back and forth in, into the background just a little bit just to play with the, the contour of this. So here's a question. Yep. If you ever lose tooth in a spot in the painting but need to still work on it, do you suggest spraying that small area or scrape some of it off or something else? Um, I guess it depends on how large a spot and what, what you're doing. But um, for one thing, so I don't, I don't, I don't often lose the, the tooth, and that's because on the whole, I'm staying pretty thin for as long as I can. So um, that's the first thing. But if you do get 
if you do get stuck, yeah, you can take some off. Let's see. And just to clarify, um, typically you don't sharpen your pastels, but every once in a while you do. Every once in a while, but it's not very, it's not very often. Um, it mostly, um, you know, I'll do it. Uh, yeah. So how does the, how do the pastels get the points that they have? Just the way I work. Yeah, I'm, I'm, the, the points that you see are just because of the way I'm tipping them in to the piece as I'm working on them. Okay, let's get some of these. So I'm trying to get these to kind of help describe the form of it, of this guy. I don't need every single little thing here. I just need a few to kind of get the character going. It just totally cracks me up. Okay. You know, in terms of subject matter, the, um, my background as an illustrator, you know, has really served me um, so well as a, as a painter because, oops, I, I don't feel, I don't feel like I have too much of an Achilles heel when it comes to um, drawing and any, anything that I want to paint. Um, I feel like it's, most things are accessible to me. Um, uh, that doesn't mean everything's easy <laughs> or that it, that it feels familiar, but um, with a little practice, I feel like I can um, pretty much paint what I want, whatever I want, which is really a, you know, pretty delightful. All right, I want I want a little bit more push on his the value on his chest here, just a little more. Also, just to clarify, Marla, that's probably a she. It's probably a she. Yeah. I know. I just call me. Yeah. It's, I know. <laughs> but you know, who knows? Maybe not. You know. She might might be a anomaly of nature or some kind of. But yeah, it's a hen. Here's a question. Um, when do you reach for Jero over New Pastel? Um, uh, usually just based on oh, the color. Okay, now I just want to play with the background a little bit.
Now, the other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to put, I got to put the tail feathers in. Um, and I've been waiting to do that because it's going to be fun. That's nice. And pumping up the volume on some of the color. It's really very, very fun. And thanks for everyone who donates to the Super Chat. Really appreciate that. Oh, yeah, that. thank you. And if you like it, of course, hit the like button. Yeah. I'm just playing with this background. It's really um, interesting to me. And how you can get a quality of movement and how that background interacts with the, the um, contour of the, of the bird. You know, what's, is there a hard edge or soft edges? Does that imply motion? Do, you know, what does that imply? Or does it doesn't imply anything? Here's a question. Mm -hmm. uh, did you put that, uh, did you put in that little bit of red to carry over some of the red from the chicken's head, or do you see it in the background of the foliage? I think um, she I, means right behind the chicken's um, tail there, tail feathers. Right here and here, yeah. I put it in to echo the color of the, on the bird. And because I thought it would look good. I'm, you know, I'm always, I'm trying to find ways of echoing the color of, of um, tying the, tying the background in with the, with the foreground. So no matter what that is, and in this case, it's the bird. So, um, yeah. Oh, 
I see something that would be nice to do. Oh boy, I'm working fast today. That's good. Just a little more form. Implying the form. Now, one thing I haven't done is I haven't given the the a highlight in the bird's eye. I think I could do that. I don't want to make too much of a pattern. I want to make sure this is random enough. The feathers. Here's another question. Yeah. Uh, are you going to work on the contour of the back of the head? Here? Uh, I don't think so. Here? Probably, the, yeah, the back of the head. I mean, there's a pretty pronounced contour in the, uh, in the reference photo. Kind of a bit of a hard edge there. Like right right up here? I don't know. I think it looks pretty neat the way it is. I mean, there's there's this sort of little bits there. But I don't I don't I don't want it to be um, such such a I don't want any of the lines to be hard. I'd I'd rather have it be like that, really, honestly. I think it, that looks cooler. Does something like that. Um, let's see. I need. I want to put a little highlight in the bird's eye, and then I. 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 I feel like it's pretty done. I don't want to mess with it too much. So I'm going to get in here. I'm going to probably block the camera while I do it. That's too much. And then the, I also want to get, um, in there with a little bit of color on the eye. I don't want it to look too cartoony. It's got, she's, she's, she, she's got a little thing there. I mean, there's all kinds of fun things that could be. I 
but um, I think that's pretty, pretty nifty. And um, how do you know when you're done with paint? Well, I think that, you know, when, when you can kind of see it as a, as a unified whole, that everything kind of comes together, um, and, you know, that's what I'm kind of looking for. Um, uh, do, does it, is there anything that, that doesn't belong? Is there anything that is missing? It's kind of a, a do, is there one part of it that doesn't fit with the rest um, that, that needs, needs work? Um, you know, and you know, I'm as I'm looking at this, I don't, I don't have that feeling about it, so I'm feeling like it's pretty close. Here's another question: um, Could you have done this with the same amount of vibrancy without the alcohol wash? The alcohol wash in this case really helped me have a, you know, very. It was like a really, really playful start, right? Um, it, there isn't a lot that we see, but um, it kind of got me um, going, right? So I think that that's useful. Whether, whether it winds up showing and being, being a major part of your piece, I don't think that that's important. The, did it help you is, to me, more important than, than that. And it definitely helped me. That's good. Uh, I like it. All right. Well, we could take a couple questions at the end here. I think it's done. I'm going to I'm going to call it good. That's it. That's Yeah. That's that's That was fun. <laughs> I hope you guys got to paint along too. I hope you guys uh had fun doing it and also um, it's kind of nice when it's just a, a couple simple shapes and you can really play around with the background. You can play around the te with the textures and the, and the color and just see what happens. I think it's uh, kind of fun to, to, to do that every now and then rather than a really complicated scene. So. Do you want to uh, yep. quickly uh, put the Oh yeah, the it's on there? Um, under, it's in the bottom. There they are. Let me go look at yep. some uh, sticks as well. Oh yeah, we can look at sticks. I uh, guess I I don't know whether how good I was about leaving them here. I think. Um, just wondering about that. All right, let's see how this how she turned out. <laughs> it could be a young he. You never know. I don't know. It's hard to tell. Let's see, did I give it? I got to give it a little space. It's really fun. Yeah, it's nice. Nice and loose, playful. Cool. And then Perfect we'll look at the, for uh, sticks. Perfect for kicking off the weekend. I'm planning a weekend full of painting. I've got kind of a mess here today, so. Let's see what we got. Used a lot, you know, surprisingly quite a lot of lavender and this kind of cream colors. Did I use that? I guess I did on the head. So, yeah. So, nice variety of different kinds of some Giro's, some Terry's, some um, Unison. 
Um, my new pastels couple. So yeah, wide wide variety, wide variety of hues, wide variety of values, wide variety of different brands of sticks. So yeah, all comes into play. Cool, and we're on right. camera two, Marla. Okay, okay, great. All right, you guys, make sure you head over to the website, paintinglessonswithmarla.com, and check out what we have going on there. And we are always working on new stuff, but there's lessons in pastel, oil, acrylic, and um, watercolor there. So check it out. And I uh, hope you have a really lovely, lovely weekend. Do we have any other? Yeah, let's just grab a few of these okay. last questions. Okay, sure. Um, we can't get to all of them, but um, yep. where do you get that foam? under what that you use for your pastels. Okay, so this is really, really thin foam. It's like a sixteenth of an inch. And you have to go to um, kind of a, more of a, um, I got it at a fabric store, but not like a Joann's. Joann's or some place like that is not gonna usually have it um, in my, from my experience. So this was like a big major fabric store in um, downtown, not downtown, but in Portland. And um, how often do you mat your pastels? You don't do your own framing, so. I don't do my own framing of the pastels any longer, but I do, uh, when, I, when, I, when I do frame something, I use a mat. Um, a lot of pastels nowadays are doing matless framing, and. Depending on the subject and the look that you want, that can be a really good option too. But you still need a spacer to um, lift the glass off of the actual artwork. Yeah, yeah. Anything else? We're good. Okay, all right. All right, guys. All right, well, have a lovely weekend and I will be back with another live stream next week. I'm not sure what I'm going to be painting. Hopefully something fun again. And um, all right, I'll see you soon. Thanks for watching. All right, bye.